In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the information on pages Excel 8 and 9, uh, in which we're going to be entering labels and values and also using the Auto Sum button. And of course, to enter content into a cell, which we haven't done so um, so far in this uh, series of videos, you can actually type in the formula bar or you can directly type in the cell itself. Now, of course, when entering content in a worksheet, you should start by entering all the labels first. And of course, labels are entries that contain text and numerical information which are not going to be used in calculations. Uh, so we can see that here in our example spreadsheet that we have, you know, Quest Specialty Travel, Trip Advisor Division, Payroll Calculator, uh, Week 30, name, hours, overtime hours, hourly rate, regular pay, uh, and all the names of our employees, those things are labels uh, on there. And really they are there to help you identify data in worksheet rows and columns. And this really makes your worksheet easier to understand. So if I would have all this data in my gross pay, I could take a look at this number here in cell G5 and say, oh, uh, well that's uh, Peter's uh, gross pay. Or if I go down here um, uh, to cell G12, I know that's Ricardo's gross pay. And I can take a look and it's easy to understand that. Or I can see that the title here says gross pay and I know what's going to go here. Now, of course, values on the other hand are numbers, formulas, and functions that can be used in calculations. And of course, to enter a calculation, you type an equal sign uh, plus the formula for the calculation. Now, of course, the equal sign is also known as the formula prefix uh, because it comes before everything. So always remember, equal sign is the very first thing you type when you want to put in a formula or a function or a calculation uh, that's on there. And of course functions, which are a little bit different than formulas, uh, are actually already built in formulas. And of course we'll be learning about those in uh, Unit B. So let's take a look at step one in Excel on page Excel 8. And it tells us here that we want to click on cell A15. So we're going down to this empty cell below here. And then it tells us we want to click up in our formula bar. And of course, when we do that, notice that the mode indicator down here, which previously said ready, now reads edit, which indicates that we are in edit mode and we can edit the information that's inside the cell. And of course, we're in edit mode anytime you enter or change contents of a cell. So next, we're going to input in a label. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in the word totals. Because as we mentioned in our previous video, uh, on there when you want to understand where your uh, formulas and functions are going to be at. Sometimes it's helpful to have it running across a column but also across the row as far as totals go. So here we're putting in totals but we're going to hit this check mark here which is our enter button. Now when we click the enter button it accepts the entry into the cell and of course you can notice down here at our bottom that our uh, mode indicator is now in ready mode. Uh, on there. Now the new text is left aligned in the cell. That's by default. And labels um, are always left aligned by default. And values are right aligned by default. Now you can change those by changing the alignment as well. Now of course Excel will recognize any entry as a value if it is a number or begins with one of the symbols uh, such as addition, subtraction, equals, at or the at sign, uh, the number sign or a dollar sign. So if you use any of those symbols it's going to recognize it as a value first. Of course when a cell contains both text and numbers generally Excel is going to recognize that um, information as a label uh, instead of a value. Uh, so generally most of your values are going to be numbers uh, that's on there uh, because when it sees both text and numbers it will recognize it as a label instead of a value. So next it tells us in step three we want to click on cell B15. Of course a little uh, hint or tip uh, once again. Uh, if you ever change your mind when you're entering in information into this um, formula bar uh, you can always cancel it out by hitting your cancel button here uh, and that will uh, delete the information and it won't accept the changes into the formula. So once we click on cell 15, 
What we want this cell to do is to total the hours worked by all of our employees. Now you might think you need to create a formula that maybe says B5 or of course equals because remember equals the formula prefix and it always comes first. So it would be equals B5 plus B6 plus B7 plus B8 plus B9. You kind of get the idea on there and that would actually be a very long formula. However, there's really an easier way to do this. And to do this, we take a look at step four. And step four tells us that we need to click the auto sum button, which is located in the editing group on the home tab on the ribbon. And we see that here is the editing group on the right hand side. And up at the top is the auto sum button. If we would click this button, we would notice that now uh, on there, that the sum function is inserted into the cell. And of course it's also suggesting, and that's this little always called these ants marching around and everything, uh, but this is the suggested range that is appearing. And of course also the name of the range is appearing in the parentheses. Now when we name ranges, uh, the best way to understand that is is that it is always the most upper left hand cell uh, to the lower right hand cell. Now since this is all in one column, the upper cell is going to be cell B5. That's the first part of the range and the bottom uh, uh, part of the range is going to be B14. So we know that this range is everything from B5 down to B14. Now of course this is a function and this is the sum function which is a built-in formula. Now this is going to include and this does include arguments. Uh, which is information necessary to calculate an answer. So we see that the sum here, of course sum is another word for adding or addition. So we want to add and of course in the parentheses is our argument. So we want to add everything from B5 down to B14. Uh, on there, of course, uh, this does include the cell references and unique information that's used for calculations. Now when we click the auto sum button, uh, it sums the adjacent cell range and of course that is the cells that are right next to the active cell so in this case this is our active cell and these are the cells that are directly located next to it that has values that can be added uh, that's on there. Now of course you can adjust this range uh, if you want to by selecting a different range before accepting the cell entry so I could highlight other cells and you notice that the name changes and everything else but we do want to have this information right here. We want to have B5 to B14 as our information that we have. Now using the sum function is actually quicker than entering in a formula uh, because when we use the range it's more efficient than entering in equals B5 plus B6 plus B7. You get the idea it's going to take a while. Once we have that on there we're going to click on our enter button here and of course now Excel calculates the total contained in the cells B5 to B14 and it shows us our result here of 378 in cell uh, B15. The cell actually contains the formula which we see up here in our formula bar of equals sum and in parentheses B5 colon B14 but however in the worksheet the result is displayed. Next it tells us on step 6 uh, that we want to click on cell C13. And of course while you're doing that uh, you can create formulas in a cell even before you enter the values to be calculated. So if we were doing this auto sum on there we could actually input in that formula first or that function first because the results will be recalculated whenever the data is entered. So if you know where your formulas want to go and you know where your data is at uh, you can formulate all that up before you even get your data in place. Of course now once we see here we have uh, cell C13, this is step 6 uh, on there. And it tells us that we want to type the number 6. So we notice that when we start typing in a cell it automatically replaces the information uh, that's located in the cell already. That's a little warning to you. Uh, if you click on a cell and you start typing, think you're going to add to it, it's actually overriding it. So uh, we will tell you a little bit later on on how to edit that information uh, where you can add to it instead of replace it. Of course once we have that it tells us to hit enter. Now of course you may notice a few things that's happened on here. Of course uh, we notice that first of all our cell pointer moved down to C14. 
uh, on there. So whenever you hit enter, that's where that's how you uh, navigate to the cell below uh, where you're currently at. But also you notice that the information here in F13 changed automatically uh, for you. It recalculated that overtime pay. So notice that that's a very important feature because when we change this number here, this number here changed automatically. Of course next, if we would go down to C18, so we're going to go back down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add in another label uh, on here, uh, which we will use a little bit later on. So in C18, we want to type in the label, label average gross pay. Then we can press our enter key uh, on our keyboard to accept that. And of course now the new label is in cell C18. And of course the contents appear to spill into the empty cells to the right. And they will do that until there's content actually located in the cell next to it. Uh, so cells will appear to spill over uh, and you think that it's going across both cells but really it's only located in this one cell here because if I put information here such as you know maybe if I put in my first name you'll notice that it looks like it deletes the information uh, in cell C19 but in truth it's all there because we can see that in the formula bar it's just not spilling over because there's something now in the next cell if I would delete my name there's the rest of the information there of course, you can also press tab uh, key to complete a cell entry as well and move your cell pointer to the right. So if you hit enter, it moves you down, and if you hit the tab key, it moves you to the right. Next, on step 8, it tells us that we want to click on cell B15. Once we have that, of course, B15 becomes the active cell, and it tells us we want to position our mouse pointer here to the lower right corner of the cell. And of course you'll notice there's kind of a little box down here and this is what we call the fill handle. And if we put our mouse pointer right over it, we notice that our pointer changes from a uh, white thicker plus sign to now a thinner black plus sign. And when we do that, this is uh, what we're going to use to fill this information into other um, cells. So it tells us that once our mouse pointer is like this, we want to click on this and drag this over to cell G15. Once we have that area and it appears to be selected, we release our mouse button and we notice that there is information there. And of course dragging that fill handle across a range of cells will copy the contents of the first cell into the other cells in the range. So in this case, uh, in the range B15 to G15, each of these is filled uh, now uh, contains a function that sums the range of cells above it. And of course you wrote in this formula earlier by hitting in the auto sum button and we use this fill handle in the lower right hand side of our uh, active cell and just drag it over and now we've got all of these different sum features uh, that is there. And of course uh, that's a very easy way instead of having to click here and then click on your auto sum as well. Now of course navigating through your worksheet as well. Uh, of course we mentioned earlier that there are millions of cells available in a worksheet and really it's important to know how to move around in it or navigate through this worksheet. Now of course you can use the arrow keys so if you would use the arrow keys you know, notice that the cell pointer has, is moving around as I'm hitting my arrow keys. And you can go up, down, left or right. Now uh, that moves one cell at a time. Now if you press your page or the page down key, that's going to move up one screen at a time or down one screen at a time. Uh, of course to move one screen to the left, you can press your alt and page up. Uh, or if you want to move um, one screen to the right uh, on there, you hit your alt and page down. Of course you can also use the mouse pointer to click the desired cell. Now if the desired cell is not visible in the worksheet, uh, you can use your scroll bars or you can actually use the go to command by clicking the find and select button in the editing group on the home tab on the ribbon. Of course to quickly jump to the first cell in a worksheet, you can press control home. So just like in the Word, you press control home, it takes you back up to the top of uh, uh, your document in Word, but it takes you to the top of your spreadsheet or your worksheet in Excel. 
Or if you want to go down to the very last cell, you can press Control End. That concludes the information that is located on pages of cell 8 and 9. In our next video, we're going to be covering over editing cell entries.